I'm joined now by the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg. Treasurer, good morning to you. Nice to be with you, Georgie. The Coalition, of course, fought tooth and nail against this Royal Commission, blocking it 26 times. What was the rationale behind resisting it? Well, Georgie, look, we can debate the failure of the Labor government when they were last in power and they had a number of financial scandals on their watch and they did nothing. We called the Banking Royal Commission and yesterday we announced that we'd be taking action on all 76 recommendations. I want to look to the future and I want to sure, ensure that Australian consumers get a better deal from their financial institutions and we restore their trust in them. All right. You did, of course, though, vote against it 26 times. So now you concede that the industry does in fact need an overhaul and you say the recommendations will be implemented pretty much in full. I guess the question though is why should we trust a government that had to be dragged into this investigation in the first place? Well, actually, Georgie, we've been making a number of significant reforms ever since we came to government in the financial sector. We commissioned David Murray to do the wide-ranging financial systems inquiry, and a number of those reforms were strongly endorsed by Commissioner Hain in his report yesterday, like the banking executive accountability regime that we have put in place to hold individuals accountable uh, for misconduct on their watch. And he has recommended, Commissioner Hain, that that be ex extended to superannuation and insurance. There are a number of things that we have done which is actually making a difference already. What is your promise to bank customers who have completely lost trust? Well, what I say to them is we will resource the regulators and we'll give them the powers that are necessary to ensure that people are held to account. And I sent a very firm message to all those in our financial services sector that not only that they can do better, that they must do better and that reform should make a difference and make a difference now and forever. And so there is an unequivocal message that they have a social licence to operate and that the Australian people deserve to be treated treated honestly and fairly by their banks. All right, so banks clearly need to be more transparent and, and, and more accountable. But I want to speak to you about regulators. Mm -hmm. They, of course, have also been given a damning assessment, failing in their duties. Now, Prime Minister Morrison is on, on the record warning against, quote, nanny-like regulators. But given what's been uncovered, isn't that exactly what's required? Well, actually, what Commissioner Hain found is that we uh, have seen a lot of misconduct that was in breach of existing law, but what the regulators were doing were giving infringement notices or putting out press releases and slaps on the wrist rather than litigating and taking to court uh, these offences. And why I is that? Why, why was that? Well, that was a choice by the leadership at the time of the regulators. Now, we have put in place new leadership, a new chair, two new deputy chairs of ASIC. We've given them more powers. And Commissioner Haynes said yesterday that they are actually making changes. So I am confident that they'll be leaning in now uh, to, to, to this type of uh, approach and it will be much more effective in holding people within these financial institutions to account for misconduct. Do you accept that that soft approach was basically due to ASIC and APRA systematically being defunded to the point where they had become completely ineffective? Absolutely not. In fact, we've increased their funding by $170 million across the regulators and our enforcement agencies, and we will ensure that they have every uh, amount of resource that is necessary to do the job. So you don't accept that regulators have been underfunded? No, I don't. I believe that they have got the funding necessary. It was more in the approach that they took where they preferred negotiation, Georgie, over litigation. Now, the one recommendation you don't agree with is a crackdown on mortgage brokers. Why not? Well, I want to say that there was a number of recommendations around mortgage brokers that we've given a tick to. Firstly, creating a best interest duty on their behalf. Um, secondly, getting rid of what are called trailing commissions. And then there was a question of whether we should stop upfront fees from the lender to the mortgage broker. What we are concerned there about is the impact on competition. We don't want the work um, that is now currently with 25,000 small businesses and people working within the mortgage broking industry just simply to go to the big banks. We don't want to give the big banks a free kick and that's why uh, previous findings of the Productivity Commission uh, and of other reports, David Murray's report, have found that this shouldn't have been changed. You've said the industry must change forever but how can you ensure that 
that implementing these recommendations isn't just a temporary fix? Well, certainly there needs to be a cultural change and it starts with the banks and Commissioner Hayne found that they are responsible for what has occurred on their watch. I think people have now got the message. I think that their reputations, both of individuals and of entities, have suffered greatly in the public's mind. And I think yesterday was an important step forward in getting the right approach and restoring the necessary trust in our banking sector. All right. Well, it is going to be a hot election issue. You've certainly got your work cut out in restoring trust. Treasurer, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Georgie.